I mean, the topic of adaptations is coming up a lot lately, and there have been some pretty bad ones. One Piece is the standout. It was excellent, but we had Wheel of Time, absolute garbage. Just last week, Avatar live action came out. People are very split on that one. I think it kind of was a miss. And there is a, a big question about what makes a good adaptation. How do you know if an adaptation is well done? What makes a good adaptation is when you nail the themes. When you understand the core of what makes the story great and you're able to translate that feeling, that idea from one medium to another. That is what made One Piece amazing because they nailed the themes and that is why Wheel of Time was an utter failure that I absolutely hate with every fiber of my being because they took all of the major themes, all of the major ideas from those books and they threw them out the window. And that's why people are very mad at the Avatar live action as well because what themes? We don't know who they are. We just have exposition dialogue. The idea of missed themes made me not excited to go see Dune Part 2 because I was very unsatisfied with Dune Part 1. I felt that it was sensational. It looked beautiful. I mean, you, it's gorgeous. It was absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And that's pretty much it. They missed all of the major themes of that book. If you've never read Dune, you absolutely need to go do so. The reason that it's such a classic, the reason that people still talk about it today, and if you look for uh, information about it, people refer to it as when sci-fi grew up. And what they mean by that is it's when sci-fi stopped being about just cool spaceships and aliens and lasers, and it took on real, mature, complex themes. And what makes Dune so special is that, in my opinion, it's really not a sci-fi book. It is a political, religious thriller mystery drama with sci-fi trappings. There's political intrigue and spaceships. There's amazing religious questions and themes and lasers. So all about to say Dune's amazing. Dune part one was very underwhelming because I think it missed the themes and that is why I didn't want to go see Dune part two, but I did anyway. And holy crap, Villeneuve knocked it out of the damn park. He took all the constructive criticism from Dune Part 1, internalized it, did a bunch of writing and directing push-ups, and, uh, I mean, was he training at 50 times gravity? Did he pull some Goku shit? Because this movie is incredible. All right, I gotta calm down. So here's the deal. The themes are there, all right? We're seeing Paul turn into this messianic religious figure. And that is the number one thing that this movie needed to achieve was to show the growth, not only of his rise to this religious figure trying to stop this giant holy war, but also of the people accepting him and accepting this religious prophecy that may or may not have been completely made up by the Bene Gesserit. The other big theme that this absolutely nails is the politics. You know, the emperor is involved in the takeover of Arrakis. Why did he do that? Why are the Bene Gesserit moving these houses around? Why would they allow the Atreides to be slaughtered the way that they were. You know, why are these people making these moves and putting, you know, and, and these moves within moves and all that kind of stuff from the book? They 100% just absolutely smashed it out of the park getting those themes correct, all while making a movie that is gorgeous, stunningly beautiful. Before I move on, I, got, I cannot forget, you have to go see this in a theater. If you're if you're excited about seeing this, you I 100% recommend you go see this movie and you have to see it in the theater because something that elevates this movie is the sound design and the soundtrack. It's incredible. The The movement of the sand is translated so well, and I don't know that you're gonna be able to get that just off of your TV. Unless you've got a home theater, you're not gonna get it. The fight scenes, the explosions, the movement of the worms, the thumping of the thumper against the sand. I mean, all of it is so beautifully told with sound. You can really tell, I don't know if it was Villeneuve, I don't know who was behind the set, uh, the sound design, but they made it, work, it, I hate to use corporate terms, the synergy, it was synergistic. It worked so well with this movie and really elevated it to the next level. The sound design really sells the final fight uh, between some people. That was an excellent fight. And, and this is another thing that a lot of times what I see in movies are fights that are either really highly choreographed and they're, it's, it's like a dance, right? And they're really beautiful in that way. They're obviously practiced and it's very fluid motions or you see fight scenes that are just brutal. It's two people that are clearly just trying to kill each other and there's no there's no finesse, there's no nuance to it. It's just trying to slug away at one another because somebody's gonna die. And then they're in between in really bad fights. But what this movie achieved with that final fight is, it was amazing. First of all, there was no music. It was just sound design. And the sounds really sold this fight. And second of all, they somehow made it choreographed because it is very fluid because these people are supposed to be like expert knife fighters, but also had that brutal, one of us is going to die and I'm throwing the punches and stabs as hard as I can quality. It, it blended the two in a way that I've never seen. 
and it was fantastic. The way this movie sells emotion should be noted as well. Uh, Paul has to take a very large test at some point in the movie, and I felt actual suspense. Again, the sound is what is selling this for the most part. The acting was really good. I have never thought of Timothy Chalamet as an amazing actor. He really showed his chops on this one, and so did Zendaya. She really sold it as well. And also, I've been hard on Javier Bardem in the past. I feel like his delivery is usually pretty wooden. He really did an excellent job with this one. So we're going with this task that Paul has to do, and like I said, I, I felt actual stress and suspense. I mean, the way they filmed it, the camera work, the cinematography, the sound, the acting, it all came together for this incredible scene. I mean, the movie looks amazing. The first movie looked amazing, but I, like I said, it was kind of empty. This movie is full, amazing themes, lots of emotion, lots of heart. You really feel like what these characters are feeling. They really sold the character development, and it looks gorgeous. I mean, still, all the same stuff that you would have loved from Dune Part 1, you know, stunning vistas, the costume design is incredible, the, the costumes look lived in. Besides the final fight, other fights look great. There was a, a large army invasion toward the end of the movie that I think they actually used extras for. If it was CGI, I'm impressed because it looked like an actual big bunch of people going in, not a bunch of fake stuff. This movie struck an amazing balance of not using too much dialogue. They're not talking at each other constantly, saying things just so you, the audience, know. They didn't do too many times where it was just silent, staring out, Ahsoka, crossed arms, right? They struck such a good balance of just the right amount of dialogue, giving you just the right information without it being campy or corny. You got the impressions that you needed. You saw the character growth in a natural way. I mean, this is this is a 10 out of 10 movie. This is amazing. And I'm telling you, you need to go see it. But last thing, if you haven't seen Dune part one, I took my daughter to see this movie with me just now. And I kind of gave her like on the ride to the theater, I gave her like a crash course of like, here's this guy, Paul and his mom, and they escaped this invasion of a planet, like uh, the bare bones. And she was able to follow along. So if you're worried, like, well, I haven't seen part one, I think that you should just get the background. But even if you don't want to, you will still enjoy this movie. It is still superb. That's how well that it's told, is that you don't even need to see part one to know what's going on. Now it's time for me to turn it over to you. Have you seen this movie? Do you plan on going to see it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I appreciate you watching, as always, and I'll see you next time.